So obviously we're doing things just a tad bit differently today, and it does come down to one comment in particular, that being Alexander Vreeland's, where he is expecting a quote-unquote priceless reaction if we fall short of our goal of winning the Stanley Cup this season. Now here's the thing, I would personally deem my reaction if that were to happen as nothing more than soul-crushing depression. Hence, we got the video running today because it's tough to convey that level of emotion, as negative as it would be, through audio only. So, for this playoff series, who knows, perhaps maybe full time from now on, we'll have the webcam up because yeah, if we fall short, it's gonna be, it's gonna be sad. It's gonna be bad. And I don't wanna start things off on such a negative note here in 2019. We don't need that. It needs to be a good year of positive energy and me not losing my goddamn mind because of a video game. But hey, if I was ever gonna lose my mind because of a goddamn video game, this is the game. Anyway, let's get to a couple of your comments, shall we? Nick Sullivan, here's the thing. Legitimately not going to be like, ah, oh, I'm not doing it and then do the challenge this time. Uh, I will say though, uh, despite the fact that yeah, they're a tad bit gimmicky, just a little bit, uh, if you guys want me to do those style of videos, the whole, ah, take this quiz, do this challenge, I'm up for it. So let me know. Down in the comments below, should that be, uh, should that be a thing? And we'll do the jersey, uh, challenge, the number challenge for the first one. Have I ever considered adjusting the sliders for franchise? No, because it would not matter. Um, the franchise sims the way it wants to, the only way sliders would matter outside of the injury slider, which does appear to do something, but with the way the game sims, you're probably not going to see major changes unless you were literally in the game, simming every game like we do for an overtime playoff game. So, in fairness, I'd be playing or watching it, really. So, I don't personally feel as though it would make a major change. Uh, so, I mean, we could do it if we wanted to, but, yeah, I don't, I don't see it as being a... A major thing when you realize Marvin Mason is a higher overall than Russell Clausen. Let's take a look at that actually because we need to take a look at the lineup. Of course, indeed he is. Marvin Mason's a 94. Russell Clausen is a 93. That brings me to what the lineup is for this first game. We know Russell Clausen has to sit out for this first game against Vancouver. We're not going to risk further injury to him. So the lineup is basically the same. Fedorov, Glass, Mason, Fotinos, Goldobin, Lackey, Letty, Rizzi, Adatsuk, Lindgren, Verbata, Bembridge. The defense, of course, fully healthy. And Andre Vasilevsky will be in goal. Now here is the thing. Up and down first round for him, but he is walking away with better numbers out of that first round matchup. Again, what a regular season record. But he is walking out of that first round matchup with higher, uh, with higher numbers, especially save percentage, than he was the year that we went to the cup final. So, and won the cup for that, uh, for that fact. So, we're pretty much good. The stage is set. It's just we need to uh, we need to take a look at what the uh, Canucks 46 win Vancouver Canucks are looking like. They were nine and one heading in to the playoffs. They make it out of the first round, and I'm sure it's going to be a beautiful sight. It's not. It's it's no. Okay. We should win this. <laughs> I'm sorry. We should win this. They are a one line team right now, but it is one hell of a line. 35-year-old Artemi Panarin only had one point in the first round, so you know what I always say at this point. Been saying it for years. It's a good sign for us, but if he wakes up, we're in trouble because they still made it out of that first round. So yeah, Artemi Panarin with one Pablo Beagle, who we've seen up there in terms of uh, in terms of you know regular season scoring for the past couple of years. Seventh overall in 2021, eight points in seven games, and yeah, you've seen what he's been capable of in the past five years since graduating up from the OHL. Brock Besser at 30 years old, 89 overall, point a game in the first round. But then we get to the second line, and from here on out, it's a little bit more promising outside of Bo Horvat being there, but an 81 overall Tanner Peterson, he had three points in the first round, four points for Horvat and Brock Nelson, 79 overall, for the 35-year-old, two points in the first round. Obviously, our second lineup matches theirs. I think that's that's an understatement, right? That's that's probably an understatement. We get to the third line, 35-year-old Cody Eakin. I know people are going to be like, the poise ratings, they're not out of control. There's some decent poise ratings, though, and the veterans are going to get you, and they might. Three points for Eakin, five points for Sam Bennett, 
and three points from Maxwell Sim, a former second round pick. Fourth line is 33 year old Cedric Paquette. Stelio Mateos is there, the Mateos, and Chandler Stevenson. We should win this series. Defensively, they're very well rounded. Olia Levy ends up making it up to a 90 overall, which, eh. Uh, you have Ahmad Cole, who's been a name that's been on the Canucks for a while now, former fifth overall pick. Caden Walker, it's a former fifth round pick, so the Canucks have done pretty well drafting. John Connolly, a former first round pick. Selection, Alec Marchment, another former first-round selection, is with Braden McNabb. Of course, a, uh, a, I don't want to say a long-time member of our team. Their goaltender is Isaac with two S's, Burns. The 25-year-old is an 85 overall. He had a 930 save percentage. Mikey, uh, Mike, I was going to say Michael and Mikey, and he came out Mikey. Mike DiPietro. The D. Pietros. Holy hell and oh god in heaven. Whew. Caleb Jones is a scratch. We dodged that bullet. Taylor Hall is injured. Taylor Hall is injured. How how badly and for how long? That's that's the first question that we need to answer here. We know Clausen's gonna be back tomorrow. He's out for the round. He's out for the round. Yes! Taylor Hall, out with the concussion. That is our window of opportunity to win this series. We should win it anyway, but with their best player, arguably, I mean Pablo Beagle probably, but with their best player out that top six, severely diminished, we should win this, no questions asked, which has me, uh, you know, very, very nervous. I'm a nervous boy. It's game one of the series tonight, boys, and it doesn't matter uh, who you are. We need to play hard. That's that's true. View the big picture here. Uh, true. Also view the big picture. When it's game seven, I need the most out of every night. Our journey to the cup starts now. It doesn't, though. It started in the second round. Or the first round. This is the second round. You know what? I never, I never say view, view the big picture here. View the... Oh, oh, you guys don't want it. Too bad. View the big picture of raising the cup, because otherwise I'm going to fire you into the sun if you don't. Let's get this series underway, shall we? There is no need for further hype and all that nonsense. Let's just go. We need to beat Vancouver, our final game, without Russell Clausen until he's back to 100%. <sighs> Breathe. First period of game one here on home ice. Let's go. That's okay. It is Pablo Beagle who scores, which scares me. Goldobin is able to get a goal back. Again, we need a much better round out of Goldobin and out of Elijah Lackey. And I feel like we'll get that when Claussen's back. But then again, they shouldn't they shouldn't be struggling with him. Oh, they they weren't line mates with them. <sighs> 15 shots to nine. 15 shots to nine. Tied at one apiece. Second period. This series is going to kill me. Hatanen gets his, I believe, first ever playoff goal. Tanner Pearson scores with 35 seconds left in the period to tie it up at 2. 26. 26. 26. Shots to 18. <sighs> Third period? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yes, Marvin. Yes. Marvin, 5 on 3 for Vancouver, and Pablo Beagle scores. We cannot stay ahead. Another power for the Canucks and Provorov scores. That's cool. This is great. This isn't stressful. Rizzy with a shorthanded goal, as you would have expected. 5 to 3, minute left. Did we win? We won. <sighs> this, this is going to suck. <laughs> We get, that is the most stressful three goal victory you will ever see in your life. Neck and neck through the first two periods. Mason scores, Beagle scores on a power play. Provorov scores the second their power play ends. Rizzi gets a shorthanded goal and Norton with an empty netter. So we have a much better performance from the second line. And our defense, which has traditionally struggled to put up points in the playoffs, they end up doing just that. So there you go. Six to three. Easy does it. Three-point night in the first star of the game effort from Elijah Lackey, Provorov, and Mason up there as well. We put up six goals on the 85 overall goalie. And now we get 
who was potentially the face of the franchise. It might be Marvin Mason now, but Russell Clausen is back. Maxim Fedorov, you did very well in your time on the top line, and I thank you for it. I am so tempted to, and i got to be honest, if I end up bumping down Josh Fotinos, it's Fedorov who gets bumped up. So, in terms of who gets bumped down, wow. Zachariah Rizzi still just killing it. I think it's going to be Letty who gets dropped. And then between Verbata, Bembridge, and Lindgren, somebody else gets dropped. Lindgren's going to stay. He still has the potential to get better. Verbata does too, to be honest. Oh, Bembridge. So let's see. We have a two-way, right? A two-way, a power forward. Letty's a playmaker. That might be, that might be what we need. Have Letty as a playmaker on the fourth line. We'd have two snipers and a two-way on that third line. But I think it would work. Bembridge might be gone. I think Hudson Bembridge is on the way out. Let's go best lines here for the moment. It does take out Bembridge by default as well. I need to change Marvin Mason back to a left wing at the very least for the sake of four on four lines. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I do think it is going to be Bembridge. Bembridge. Hey, Clausen's up to a 94 as well. So there you go. Marvin Mason is not the top overall. We have two 94s. If we lose this series or any series with two 94 overall players on the squad, I quit. I just quit. We've already won a cup with them at least, so we got that going for us. That's the problem with a series like this, is you have this core that is so good, they're so young, that you want to continue to see how they develop, even though they've already found success. <sighs> Alright, let's get this lineup set. Hopefully it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't affect things too heavily. But we'll go best lines here again. There you go. So Mason, Glass, Klassen. Beautiful. Fotino, Skoldobin, Lackey, Fedorov, Rizzi, and Letty. I think that's the way to do it. We'll move Fedorov over to the right. And I think that's the way to go. The one thing I am concerned about is that Rizzi's been scoring goals. And we have just added another sniper to that line. Fotinos is also a sniper. Yeah, I mean, in terms of player types, there's not really a strong balance we can find there. I am worried about Rizzi's development or uh, production being stunted from this setup, but we'll see what happens. And again, our power play, our penalty kill, it's just, it is absolutely nuts. I'm very tempted, though, and I'm actually going to, because right now, I don't care about player morale. That's not a factor. We just need results. I don't care if you're not happy. Do what you got to do. Uh, the flip side is that we're going to put Rizzi and Datsuk on the power play. We're going to balance that out. Datsuk, Fedorov, and Rizzi. Uh, mixed up the Russian names. We're going to keep them on the power play. So let's have Klaassen on that side, Mason on that side. That's fine. Uh, let's put Lackey on the right. And it's just nothing but lefties. So let's go with, I'm going to keep Bobrovsky on that top unit. We're going to go Fedorov, Bobrovsky, uh, Bobrovsky, Rizzi, and Provorov. We have a lot of Russians on this team. In fairness, Goldobin's Belarusian. But between Datsuk, Bobrovsky, or at least the Russian, well, yeah, I mean, Provorov to, god damn. Anyway, anyway, we're looking good. Vasi between the pipes as well, obviously. Sorry to Gervais Schwinard, but... There is clearly only one that is leading the way for us right now. Because of auto-rotate, I am going to have to double-check the lines before we go ahead and do this. I need to take a look as well at what the Wolves are doing. Because I just, I, I haven't cared. It's just been tunnel vision. Are they out of the playoffs? Have they punched their ticket to the next round? They won. Okay, they beat Grand Rapids 3-1. to one. It might might be worth sending down Bembridge just to bolster up that team. That is an option that I will explore after game two. Let's do this. We need to win. We need to defend home ice. They still don't have Taylor Hall. They won't have Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall's out of sight, out of mind. First period of game two is scoreless. They outshot us 8-7. to seven. Not ideal. Second period, also not ideal. 17 shots to 18. 
one nothing on the board. We go from scoring six goals, five with an empty netter, to uh, being held scoreless through 40 minutes. Please, for the love of God, can we turn this around? I am begging you. Anybody? Power play for the Canucks. Not like this. Tanner Pearson makes it too. Don't do this. Do not. Russell. Somebody. <laughs> the Van... Uh, barring a major comeback here, the Vancouver Canucks are going to take game two. Alright, that's not concerning at all that we win a game by scoring six goals and then get shut out three to nothing. A 30 save shutout from Burns. I can't say Vassy didn't do his job. That is extremely disheartening. Extremely. <sighs> My mind's just churning right now out of all the things we could potentially change up with this team, even though I know people like, for the love of God, don't mess with it. It's just one game. And I know, I know, that's, things will probably stay the same. But that is an extremely disappointing loss. Hudson, you're probably not going to like this, but let's be honest, you're not really a major part of the long-term plans right now. Uh, you are going to get dropped down to the Wolves. We'll go best lines down there, and we'll see what the team can do. They've done well. Let's hope that continues with uh, Keegan Coburn. Jesus. Leading the way in dominant fashion. The series shifts to Vancouver. The Couve. Add that to the Couve counter. I'm not, make, I'm not editing that in. I'm just not. Add that to the mental Couve counter. It's game three. No change is necessary as of yet, but it's a, it's a potential factor here. Moving forward, let's go. Come on. First period. Not ideal, but promising. About even shots. Brock Nelson gets the opening goal. Russell Claussen, welcome back to the postseason, gets his first goal. Second period. Okay. Paquette scores. Elijah Lackey scores. Two all. 26 shots to 23 as we enter the third period. Beagle scores 29 seconds in. Russell Clausen scores again. Ah, oh, the stress is killing me. Proveroff gives us the lead. It's a 4 to 3. I can't watch. This is. Oh, this is so stressful. <laughs> Power play for the Knights. Elijah Lackey. What is, what is this? We have two minutes left. Please, please. Thank God. 6-3 final. 3-0 final. 5-3 final. Oh, boy. Okay, well, we got the win. So that's nice. Again, Klaassen with a two-goal effort. Elijah Lackey. With a two-goal effort, and Provorov continues to put up points. Something, again, that he has struggled to do since we've acquired him. Again, two goals for each of them. A hat trick of assists for Mr. Goldobin. And we regain control of this series, which is nice. Will it stay that way? For my, oh God, for my stress levels and blood pressure, I hope so. It's game four. Uh, for the record, Carolina up 3-0 on Pittsburgh, Tampa up on Montreal, and the Preds are up on Colorado. Game four. No lineup changes necessary. Just see what happens. That's all we got at this point. Sit back and see what happens. First period of game four, and we get the opening goal. It's Rizzi. All right, that is very promising. Again, I was worried that his production was going to be stunted. 12 shots to 5, a fairly dominant period. Second period, and we're looking okay. I'm not going to get... Uh, I'm not going to get overhyped just yet. Gertzen, Klaassen. Klaassen has been on a tear outside of that first game back. Third period, we're up 3 to nothing. I'd really like a fourth goal. I don't feel confident yet. I don't. I trust Vassy, but I don't feel confident yet. Power play, please. Thank you. Better off. And Rizzi both score in this game. A dominant performance. Whether or not we maintain the shutout, it doesn't matter at this point. We are going back home. Elijah Lackey, we're too good. 
We're too good. I'm starting, starting to feel a bit better. 3-1. We are going back home with a 3-1 series lead. Our first of three opportunities to end the series will be in game five. It's a 5 to nothing shutout. Ridiculous. Rizzi, Gertsen, Klaassen, Fedorov, Lackey. Five different goal scorers. For those of you keeping track at home, three-point night for Fedorov and a 25-save shutout for Andre Vasilevsky. to save the best for the last. Nashville just beat Colorado 8-3. to Call it a hunch. I think we're on a collision course. <laughs> Carolina's already punched their ticket to the conference final. Tampa's up 3-1 to on Montreal. Nashville up 3-1 to on Colorado. We have a team meeting available. Let's talk. Let's talk. We win tonight. It's off to the next round. Let's get it done. And uh, our fa oh, the fans are excited and the sponsors are excited and I'm excited and the viewers are excited and the people are excited. The viewers and the people. All different people. People, people. Whew. Game five. No real change. No real changes needed, I'd say. Let's do this. We beat St. Louis in five. Can we beat the Couve in five? I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. Here we go. Good lord. 60 minutes away, potentially, from going to the conference final. First period. That helps. Elijah Lackey, Maxim Fedorov, cannot be stopped. Ten shots to five, two to nothing on the board. Second period. They do get one back. Brock Besser's first goal of this series. And they have a chance. We're either 20 minutes away from the conference final, overtime, or a game six in Vancouver. Here we go. Here we go. Power play is killed off. That's a little bit troublesome. We need insurance. Another power play. Wow, they killed off two power plays. We took a penalty. It was a fairly quick one. Regardless, eight minutes left. Please. 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 Four minutes. Three minutes. Two minutes. One minute. We are too good. We are too good. The Vegas Golden Knights are off to the conference final. We dispatch of the Canucks in five games. Burns was the first star of the game. That was not enough. Vassy with a 25 save effort. Fedorov with another goal. He has a tremendous, absolutely tremendous series. And again, Colorado, though, actually beat Nashville. It does look like we're on a collision course with the Preds. <sighs> oh, boy. I doubt the effort I've seen so far will carry us to the end. That's a lie. This has been a pretty good effort. We faced adversity. Yeah, I don't know if we faced adversity. That series was a walk in the park compared to uh, uh, in, in the park because there's just the one park. We won when we needed to. Let's dig deep and keep it up. I need you to double down. I'm not asking for 12 goals. Dig deep. Keep it up. Let's do this. We got this. I believe in you. Whew. Marvin Mason leading the way. 12 points in 10 games, which is just ridiculous. Let's look at the team in general. We know what Mason is at this point. Cody Glass just under a point a game effort. And a Russell Kloss in three goals in four games. Not too shabby. That second line, Fotino, six points in ten games. Don't think we'll be bumping him down yet. Goldobin with seven points. And Elijah Lackey. Eleven points in ten games. I love Tate Dwyer. I think that was the right choice. Third line, Letty with seven assists, six points, five goals for Rizzi, and ten points for Maxim Fedorov. I, I don't get it. Like, I do because of his accuracy and his offensive awareness, but damn. You have Lindgren, two points, Verbata, two points, and Datsuk with four points. So, Verbata and Lindgren have been a little bit uh, ineffective throughout the first two rounds. Both put up 30 points in the regular season. But in terms of who would get bumped up, I mean, obviously, Jeremy Dykhouse is there, Bembridge is an option still, Steos, Robertson, Nilstorp. We do have options. I think maybe if we call anybody else up, though, it would probably be Dykehouse. That should get the look. And, of course, defensively, we don't have anybody to worry about. So I'd say that's probably the main question heading into the next episode is whether or not we change anything up with the fourth line, give them time 
Now, here's the thing as well. you got to factor in that we have some players who are just dominating right now, and there's only one puck. There's only so many points to go around. But, you know, minus three, minus two. Again, not a great stat, but let's be honest. They've been ineffective throughout the first two rounds. Defensively, Provorov is that's he's everything we hoped he would have been a few seasons ago. No points for Rositas and 21 penalty minutes. I might take a look at his uh, player, uh, the edit player option in a second. Four assists there for Bobrovsky. Two goals for Gerdson. Two points for Norton. Gerdson takes some penalties as well. And again, Norton and Hatanen is there. We're going to take a look at Rositas and Gerdson here in a second. And Andre Vasilevsky, again, struggled in the first couple of games against St. Louis. But he's, he's playing like we needed him to. Like I said, I think the plan overall with this series is probably to sim another one to three seasons. Probably three at the most. Obviously, we're in January now. This series has lasted, at least in terms of the calendar, a little bit longer than my opening series typically lasts, or at least that's how it feels. But when we have the three-day block of, okay, this content, this content, this content, and then redo it, this series has, you know, there's been a bit more of a delay between episodes. But I still feel like another... And one to three seasons so we can continue to see what what is going to happen with this club is the way to go. But this is probably Vassie's last season. We do have him on that great contract, but what is Gervais Schwenard going to want? The big question here with Rositas is fight, uh, fighting tendency, uh, and it's sometimes. Eh, I mean, I might drop that down to never. He was born in 05. Jesus. This fictional player was born in 05. <laughs> We're not that far off. We're already at the 2002-2003 birthday as being like, hey, I'm getting drafted, which is fucking strange. But what I want to do is take a look at whether or not they're just taking penalties because of fight consistency or if it's just down to random fluke, discipline. So let's take a look here at Rositas. 21 penalty minutes. Does it track fights in the playoffs? It should. Oh yeah, he has three fights already. Gertzen has one. So, Gertzen has eh, technically taken nine penalty minutes. So that would be... How the hell would the math work out on nine? If he's had one fight... Unless it was a game... Like, because in this game, there's no like extra charge for game misconduct, is there? So he's had one fight... I guess it would be one fight, one major, and two other minor penalties, I guess. Yeah, that'd be the only way. So, he's taken two major penalties, or a major penalty in a fight, which is brutal. And then Rositas, obviously, uh, three fights and three two minutes, or, you know, one two minute and the double minor. There are options there. We should probably lower the fighting tendency on Rositas. Probably. Let's go ahead and find out uh, with 100% certainty whether or not we are playing Nashville in the next round. We will find out right here and right now. It's Tampa and Carolina in the east. Can Colorado, tried to hold off on that, that didn't work. Can Colorado come back? No, they cannot. We are playing the Nashville Predators in the conference final. I am scared. The Chicago Wolves have swept the Iowa Wild. They are also going to the conference final, and we'll start paying a little bit closer attention to what is going on there. Nashville, in the regular season, did not win their division, but they did win 51 games. Averaged over three goals a game, just under two and a half against per game. In the playoffs, up to this point, let's take a look here. Goals four per game. They are averaging the most at a 3.75. They've scored 45 goals in 12 games. We've scored 36 in 10. Craziness. Goals against 20, 27 for them. Their power play at 33%. Ours is at 18. We do have the higher penalty kill, though. This is going to be a showdown. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back again with the conference final matchup. Uh, we'll keep rolling with the webcam, at least for the rest of this playoff run. Because, yeah, it's 
I mean, it's either going to be a lot of joy or a lot of despair, <laughs> one or the other. If you have any suggestions, anything else, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you think as far as, like, the kind of typical, like, gimmicky, oh, quiz videos and stuff like that. For the hell of it. And, uh, yeah, we're done here. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it, as always. You know the deal. Support the video with the likes, the subscribing, and the, the, the everything, the descriptions. Yeah, we're getting close to 12K. Which is kind of cool, I just noticed earlier as I checked the comments. So yeah, thank you. See you next time. <laughs>